I love that. Okay, <laughs> are you ready? Okay, so do you see where we are? Again, so we're in Shimona Esway. We're on page 82. We're on the uh, part where we're really asking Hashem, please, can you accept all our prayers? And not only are we asking Hashem to accept the prayers that we are saying right from the Sidur, right from this, you know, uh, prayer of Shimona Esrei, but you actually have a, an opportunity here to put in your personal prayer. So I'm gonna show you where. So, um, and you'll see not only your personal prayer, but it's interesting, the rabbis have written also two prayers. Like, I don't know if everybody has the same C door, but you'll see there's two boxes in gray. Like, tell me if you are looking at the same thing. I'd really appreciate some feedback. Yeah? Page 108 in the brown one. 108 in the brown one. Okay, so it's good for people to have their high sinora. It's good for people to have their sitter out. Okay, because it really does help and you want to know what you're saying, right? Okay, good. So if you're looking on the bottom, there are two very beautiful prayers that you can insert. It actually says it right here. During the silent Shmona Esrei, one may insert either or both of these personal prayers. I know that I like to do that. One is the prayer for Parnassa, you know, earning a living. My father used to always say, Parnassa is Melchama. Parnassa is war. That's what uh, the Torah tells you. You got to go out into battle to, to, you know, make your Parnassa and to make it honestly and, and you know, enough and all that things. And you know, you need Hashem's help with it. So here is a good place to talk about that. And it's not only about you, it's always about everybody's parnasa. That's what I love. And it also, the end of that prayer is like a statement, like, you know, the only one who provides sustenance is you, Hashem. Like, so there's nowhere else to go. This is the address, right? On the other side, you say, Ana Hashem Chatasi. So it's very interesting over there, um, you're, you know, speaking very personally and you're asking Hashem to help you to do tshuva. So everybody can sort of put in there into that little part, you know, something that they do, like, you know, sometimes like they ask you for a specific uh, hate, a specific uh, sin or place where you miss the target that you could put in. So sometimes you could put in, you know, Lashon Hara, whatever, like, please Hashem, you know, forgive me, help me with it. And it's a constant battle. So that's like an example of personal prayer that was really added in. On top of that, you can put in your own personal prayer. Like that's the time, you know, that prayer I sent to you um, not long ago about the building of the base of Migdash. I put it in over here also. Because to me, like if you're going to ask for the ultimate prayer, the ultimate prayer that would answer every one of our problems and the world's problems and everyone, everything and anything's problems would be that idea of a ga'ula, would be of the ultimate redemption. Right, because that's when the world would be filled with knowledge of Hashem. Everyone who's sick would be cured. Like it would be just a restart for the whole world. So, I mean, that is the prayer that really answers everyone's prayer. Okay. So, so now let's for a minute go back up to the top and let's look at Shema Kaleinu in its own way. Okay. So, I just want to tell you a nice story that happened to me today, actually. So, someone came to see me, a very sweet girl who's looking for Shirach. You know, and she was asking me to help her. So what's the hard part about Shaduchim today is I don't know any boys. <laughs> you know, it's really, really hard. Like, you know, you see these beautiful, lovely girls who really want to help. And you really have, like, you're just, your hands are tied. You really don't know anyone. So I said to her, you know, I'm glad you came. And I really appreciate it. And I really hope I can help you. <laughs> But for right now, I can tell you, I, I, I have this like one guy maybe, but I don't really know too many boys. But here's what I'm going to tell you that I've seen happen. A good idea is for you to find a friend who's also looking for a shidduch, for you to pray for her and for her to pray for you. All right. When Hashem sees that kind of unity, then, you know, that's Hashem answers your tefillos. But I said, there's one caveat. And what's the caveat? that you have to be able to be so sincere about wanting to help that other person that even if they got engaged before you, it would be okay. You'd say like, Hashem, I'm just so happy. It's, it's not about me, it's about her. That's who I'm davening for. So this girl, like such a special neshama who this girl is, she goes, yeah, yeah, that's what I pray for all the time in Shema Koleinu. So I said, oh, you mean you pray for someone already? She goes, no. I pray that Hashem should give me the ability to be able to be so happy for someone else that it wouldn't hurt me if they became engaged first. 
that's something. Like I said to you, you're very special, Neshama, you're going to be just fine. Do you know what I mean? So this is an interesting idea. Like that was a very interesting idea, like to really look in Shmakulim and really, you know, be able to admit like, look, you know, Hashem, and nothing. I can't do this without you. I can't even do mitzvahs. Like, you know what I mean? Bad enough, you know, help me stay away from the naughty stuff. But even just to be able to do the good stuff really sincerely, you know what I mean? I need your help. I thought that was, I was really taken by that. Okay. So now it's interesting. So it says, Shma koleinu. What does the word koleinu mean? Everybody look in your sitter and then somebody tell me, what does it mean? Koleinu. Does it voice? Mean voice, voice, voice. So it's an interesting thing. You know, some of the rabbis ask, like, why would you say kolenu? You would really think you should say, listen to our wishes. Yeah, our wishes, our prayers, like my voice. You know why it's very interesting, the concept of voice? How loud is your voice in Shmona Esrei? Very quiet. Very quiet. Like, you know, it's interesting. I could see, like, I could see it, like, Shma Koleinu after we've yelled, Shma, you're so, you know what I mean? Like, this. but here it's like, Shma Koleinu. You know, it's so interesting. So what is the voice that we're talking about here? Like, it's an interesting idea. What is the voice? What is the voice? The voice of our heart. Okay, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful, Esther. Okay, so a number of answers. Esther got one of them, which is the voice of our heart. What does that mean? The voice of our intention. You know, that emotional, real voice. Sometimes you can't even talk. Do you know, like sometimes you're so hurt, you're so this, you're so that, there really isn't even a voice. It's just like, uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, listen to the intent of our heart. Okay, so the voice of our heart, that was beautiful. Also, Shema Kolenu is the only power that the Jewish people have. It's the only power that we really have. And that's the voice of, what's the two voices? Yeah, uh, like, try again, Sandy, you just have to unmute. Hakol Kol Yaakov. Yes, which is, which voice? What do we, what does that voice represent? The voice of? Oh, um, um, Yashar. Okay, yes, our voice of prayer, like, you know what I mean? The voice of yeah. prayer and the voice of Torah. That really is the strength of the Jewish people. You know, Shem blessed us with Nai Nahara, like an incredible mind, where Jewish people, I told you once, <laughs> when Slave was talking to these uh, family, you know, the, the very, uh, whatever, secular family that was at his Shabbos table. And they were trying to discuss this idea of intermarriage, you know, so... Leib said like to the parents, like, how would you feel if your kids intermarried? And they said, oh, you kidding? Give away these amazing, brilliant Jewish genes? Never. Okay? Like, so it had nothing to do with spirituality. They were like, we're so bright. Why would you waste that brain power? You're going to marry another Jewish brilliant brain. So just an interesting idea. Okay. So although we may have brilliant Jewish brains, if Hashem is not watching us, there is no way that we will survive. And that's the bottom line, okay? So what is the greatest power we have? What you know, brings down this hashkacha pratis? What brings down your H, you know, your HP is this idea of prayer prayer. You talking to Hashem. That brings down hashkacha pratis, right? Right? Um uh, you know, there's a very, I think I told that story, right, with the ant, remember, with the soldier, the waiter, the, I told that story, I think, yesterday, yeah? Anybody remember what I'm talking about? Maybe I didn't tell it. Did I tell, tell it? it yeah, okay, you did. Good. Okay, so it's just a great story, a true story. It's another one of these Yoel Gold stories. So Yoel Gold's aunt, her name was Betsy. <laughs> okay, cute name. So anyway, Aunt Betsy and her husband, uh, I think it was Shimon, decide to go to Israel, like on the fly. Okay, they decide to go to Israel. Then they're in Israel, they decide to go to Herzliya. And in Herzliya, they decide to go to this restaurant called, um, I think it's called Wine, Meat and Company. Okay, so go into this restaurant. It's very pretty. You know how in Israel, there's like sometimes two floors on the restaurant so they walk in you know the waiter greets them and then they say you know what we really would love to be sitting upstairs like the view is so much better no problem we're gonna take you right upstairs take him right upstairs and the new waiter comes really sweet guy they're kibitzing and you know and then you know she just casually says so what's your name and he goes Barack and she goes Barack you know and like she gets these like tingles and then he goes okay see ya like I'm mean, just going to get this stuff she turns to the husband right away. She goes, you've got to ask him this right now. You ask him if his mother's name is Orna. 
Okay, so the husband goes, okay, like no problem. So he goes, he yells out, hey, Barack, is your mother's name Orna? And he goes, yeah, it is. So then she goes, ask him to come back. So he comes back and she says, Barack, I just want to know, did you fight in Gaza in Operation XYZ? I can't remember the name. Did you fight in that operation? He goes, yeah, I did. So she goes, you know that I've been praying for you for over a year. Your name is Barack Ben Orna. And only the Jewish people have this. You know, they have these hotlines called to pray for people. There's a hotline out there where you can pray for an Israeli soldier. They just give you the name of an Israeli soldier. So during this battle in Gaza, that's what they did. And she got this boy's name. And he's like, what? You were praying for me? Yeah, she goes, yeah, yeah, how are you? How did you do? He goes, I did fine. You know, I'm so grateful. I can't believe you. Like you live somewhere else. Like I lived in California. Like you live in California? You just were praying for me? She goes, yes, yes, it meant a lot to me. And then she goes, and Barack, I have to tell you something really crazy, really, really crazy. And he goes, what? She goes, right before I left to Israel, I have your name on my kitchen cupboard. And I looked up and I saw your name on the cupboard and I said, Hashem, I've been praying for this boy for over a year. I have no idea if he's safe or not. Please, Hashem, give me an opportunity to meet this boy. Wow. So he, this Barak, he said, I to leave this and let me have your email address. We have to stay in touch. And a couple of days later, he sent her an email and he said, you know, I haven't put on Tillin for years. But after I met you, I realized how much God is watching over me and watching over you. And we're all tied together. So I'm putting my tone back on. Beautiful story, right? So this is the strength, right, of the voice of the Jewish people. This is, that's our only power. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's where you see, like, all these incredible miracles coming out. So another um, voice that they say that this is, okay, so we have the, we said the voice of the heart, the voice of um, the power of the Jewish people. And then we say it's the voice of the neshama. That's whose voice is calling out to Hashem. Because and like who emigrated here? Helene, you emigrated, right? And Karen, you emigrated from uh, um, South Africa, right? So, and Leora, right? So what do they say? Like, and Barb, like no matter... How much you get comfortable in Canada, your original home in your heart is always South Africa. I'm sure you feel it, especially in the winter. <laughs> okay, yeah. take me back. All right, so the neshama really, you have to know, really wants to go home. You know, that's how we always say like the neshama is like the flame that wants to jump off the candle. It's anti-gravity. The neshama, everything else on earth is just wanting to go down. The neshama is just, let me go home. Okay, please. Like I'm really not on my home turf. I'm really not where I belong. So the neshama is what's crying out to Hashem. Like when you're looking at the part of you and you're wondering who's doing all the prayer, where is that voice of the heart that Esther's talking about? It's coming from the soul. Just like, and it would be a problem if not. You know, a mother, when she gives birth, she has this like incredible attachment to the baby. So I've been at all my, you know, daughters and daughter-in-law's births, quite a number of them, Bar Hashem and Halavai Viter. But what happens, like I could hear like, one time, I remember one of the girls was like, I'm never doing this again. And they were like hysterical because there was no epidural that day. All right? So it was bad news. All right. So she was really like, whoa. Okay. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like, I hate this. I'm never doing this. It's so stupid. And like just screaming and screaming. And then the baby came out. And I'm telling you, they put the baby on her um, you know, chest. And she was like, like she was just mad in love it was like a really beautiful thing to see so there's hormones that go up and down with the story so that's the neshama and hashem there is a natural connection right why because hashem is the creator of that soul just like the baby who recognizes the creator the mother do you know what i mean and the mother recognizes what it created there's a natural bond there's a lot of effort put into things that's why they say have love who's got the greatest love a parent to the child more than a child to the parent and you see it all the time your children get over you can still be showering them with everything and forget it <laughs> okay it's the new husband, the new kids that are number one. And you got to be fine with that. Yay! Okay. And you're still willing, right, to keep giving to them because 
You have so much love invested in them. So this is a beautiful idea. And when it comes to prayer, it's very much your neshama who's calling out to Hashem. Who gets in the way? It's a hurrah. Yeah, and the body. Do you know, like, you know, it's when your body, body kind of gets bored and it's looking around and doesn't want to stand up. You know, ever have this, like, Rosh Hashanah, your feet hurt. You're like, can't they close that arrow already? You know what I mean? Like, right? There's that body part of you that's getting in the way. But this sincere voice, Shema Kalenu is like, you know what Esther was saying, that sincere voice, that soulful voice that really wants to be connected. And the greatest way for any human beings, like we have to really appreciate that. This is big. I wish somebody would tell this to people before they get married. What is the greatest way you can connect to another human being? What's the tool of connection? What's the greatest tool of connection? Giving. Speech speech it's communication communication right is the greatest tool of giving so you see it like when the mother picks up the baby they can't talk and everybody's going you're so cute it's a cookie, cookie, cookie. like you're talking all day to this kid who never can answer you back right but you're looking for the eye contact and you're you know what i mean so this is what we have to appreciate the Makalenu is your ultimate opportunity. Now is your ultimate opportunity in Shema Kalenu to really say your personal communication and to really like call from the Nishama that's really asking, like Hashem, like I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm putting in all these prayers, all these brachas, the Anshe Knesses Hakadola. They told me to pray for health and to pray for the tzaddikim and to pray for this and to pray for that. Shema Kaleinu, God Almighty, you know, listen, 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 listen to this voice, even though the words may not be able to be heard. It's the voice of the Nishama, right? It's the voice of the neshama that's calling you. Like, please, Hashem, just like a baby, you know what I mean? Gets it? I get it, right? And just like we're hoping the mom gets it, we want you to be getting it. So it's a very um, beautiful thing. The Hassan Sofer tells you, which is very nice, very nice and important for us to understand. He said, prayer is partially nevuah. So what does nevuah mean? Anybody know what does the word Navua mean? Yeah. Okay, so Sandy is muted, but I could read lips. Okay, so it's prophecy. Okay, so what's prophecy mean? What's prophecy mean? Come on, come on. Okay. It's a connection to a sham that that something that you feel. It's not okay. necessarily Nivua like, is a little bit more than feel. It's a little more than feel, right? Like when a Navi, what it was a prophet, a prophet was someone who predicts the future. Predicted the that future. How? Well, Karen, how did he predict the future? Spoke to Hashem or Hashem gave him messages. Yes, these are messages from Hashem. I, it's not a prediction. A, a Navi's prediction was never self predicted. If it was, then he's not a kosher Navi. Okay, that's how you know. A Navi is someone who's really hearing from Hashem. So this is interesting. So how is our prayer to Hashem, the, the Hasim Sofer saying, related to Nebuah? Okay, it isn't Nebuah, but it's related to Nebuah. How is it related to Nebuah? Because if you really believe it. If you yes. really believe it, then... Okay. Yes, okay, beautiful answers. Okay, beautiful answers. Okay, that's one of the answers, uh, uh, Karen. I'm going to explain a little more, but your answer is also right. Okay, so how is it related to Nebuah? is that when you pray to Hashem, you actually start actions in motion, okay? And then from the actions, the prayer that starts actions in motion from Hashem, you get messages. Do you see what I mean? Like that's Hashem talking to you. You activated it. It's like, you know, when I tell you, you make a bracha, then you bring down the blessing to the world. That's part of Nevoa. There's actually a interaction between you and Hashem. You started talking and he answers. Sometimes the answer is yes. You really see it very obviously. Sometimes it's not yet. Sometimes it's no. Right? But sometimes you can really read the messages. So I'm going to tell you another story because these stories are so valuable. They're all contemporary real stories. So this is what, you know, whose statistical possibilities are impossible. That's what you have to appreciate from these stories. It can only be Hashem. Who is this Aunt Betsy and who is Barak? 
Hey, there's 7 billion people on the earth. She just picked out of the hat his name, you know, and then she just picks out of the hat, going to Israel, going to, to the, you know, going to Herzliya, going to the restaurant, going to, instead of sit on the bottom, sit on the top, then going out of nowhere, he becomes the, do you try to see what I'm trying to tell you? These things are, they're impossibilities, all right? So they're improbable. So you have to realize and appreciate them. So here's an example of somebody who sets something in motion with his tefillah. Okay, so it happens in 2003. So there's a, a Jewish soldier in the American army, okay? American army. His name is Jordan Schwartz, true story. And he serves in Iraq and he is an officer. So that, which means when you're an officer, it's not easy because you have all these soldiers under you that you are in charge of, and you really feel an achrayis, you feel a responsibility for their life, okay? So they were patrolling in Iraq, and what was going on in Iraq was things were getting more tense. There was a lot more unrest. And often, like, you know, when they would be calling them to prayer, right, with, you know, that noise, they would call them to prayer, like, things would happen. Like, you know, they would shoot at the soldiers, or there were bombs on the road, or there were ambushes, like it was just getting very tense, all right? So he's getting a little concerned, right? And he's in his Hummer, behind him is like, a you know, another trail of, of cars with soldiers in them, and he's at the front, right? And he's going through this marketplace that usually is very busy, right? And he, he's starting to get like squeamish, like he's looking around going, this is odd, a little bit too quiet, we're the only ones on the road, right? And he realizes, like, he thinks that he's, you know, driving everybody into an ambush. He doesn't know what to do. So he says, oh, my God, I want to pray. Very, very secular Jew. He's like, I don't know how to pray. I don't even know how. And then he remembers, it's like a beautiful story. He remembers when he was a little kid, he was seven years old, okay? He lived in Dallas, Texas. And his next door neighbors, their last name was Jesmer, okay? Very nice. And they happened to be religious his family totally secular they were religious all right and he was best friends with their son this jesmer boy named yakov but everybody called him jj okay so his best friend was jj and his sister jj's sister rifka was older she was the their babysitter okay so this rifka jesmer used to babysit this jordan schwartz when he was a young kid okay Totally secular kid. So she'd be a really fun babysitter. And then she'd put them to bed, which is the hardest part, you know, when you're a babysitter, that's the hardest part. <laughs> so she had a hard time, like, you know, trying to get these kids into bed. So she tried to get this Jordan into bed and he wouldn't want to go. So she'd say to him, you know what? Let me teach you something really special. This is a special prayer that you can say before you go to sleep. You should know, Amita, I just like reviewed it with Gabrielle and I told the story so it's you know if you want to tell them anything so so this is a beautiful prayer it's the Shema Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echot and the, and he said to her like what's so special about this she said it's a prayer of protection God protects you while you're sleeping so he it just came to him so here he is he's you know in this Hummer right and instead of standing up he sat down for a minute he said the Shema and boom they hit this bomb, okay? And all the sharpenels going and all this, like it's really, really a sakana. And thank God he wasn't killed. He said, if he would have been standing, he would have been dead on arrival. There was no mm -hmm. way. But, you know, he, sharpenel hit him, sharpenel hit the Hummer, but nobody, nobody died. And he had injuries, you know? So he got back to the base, they take him back, he recovers, and he sits and he says to himself, like, if it wasn't for that, like, he didn't believe he would have survived. It was his prayer. God answered his prayers. Like, he really was like, Shema Kolenu. He listened, right? A couple days later, this tall guy comes over to him, okay? And he says, uh, you Jordan Schwartz? He goes, yeah, I'm Jordan Schwartz. He goes, you know what? I'm a chaplain. And I was going through my box, and I found a sidur and a kippah, and... I think you should take it. And he's like, what? Like, okay. And he goes, okay, God, I hear you. You know, which I think I really admire people whose eyes and ears are open, right? This is the Navua. You see what I'm saying? Here comes Navua. So he says to himself, you know what? I got to find out who I am. Like, I don't know anything. I'm going to Israel. I get out of the army. I'm going straight to Israel and I'm going to find myself. So he goes to Israel and he ends up finding a yeshiva, 
Okay, and somebody it tells him he should go to the X, Y, and Z yeshiva. Okay, well, you know, what? why not? Like, why not? So he goes to the X, Y, and Z yeshiva, he's walking through the door and he bumps into somebody, okay? So the two people straighten up and they look at each other and their eyes are bugging out like, <gasps> and he goes, JJ? And the other guy goes, Jordan? Okay, <laughs> and they couldn't believe it, okay? Here was JJ Jesmer, in this yeshiva and here was Jordan Schwartz and they're like hugging each other and it ended up that JJ was the Rebbe. Do you imagine for the Torah class that he was gonna take in that yeshiva? Okay, so this is why it's prophetic. So I'm sure every one of us, like I know I've had it, I know all of us have had it, where you've dug into Hashem and he answers and it goes like round and round and up and down and this way and that way. And you really see like, oh my gosh, right? So these are beautiful realities. So when you're davening, it's part nevua. You are starting something in motion. The question is, you need to hear, you need to look, you need to listen. So God may not be talking to you in a loud voice but he will be talking to you in actions, right? Right, so you see that story with Jordan, right? He's saved, then suddenly the chaplain gives him a sitter and a kippah, like what, you know what I mean, right? Then he ends up at a yeshiva and he bumps into the guy who happened to be the neighbor of the kid, the brother of the girl, who taught, like, you, you know, you kind of, you have to use your head and you have to understand. But I'll tell you a true story, you know what, Barb? This all happened a little bit with Barb. So Barb has a client, Mindy Klein, right? Mindy Klein. So Mindy Klein, when I gave my kidney, happened to be in the hospital. When I was giving my kidney in the hospital, her husband wasn't well, and he was in the hospital too. So Mindy and her husband are in the hospital, and me and Rabbi Sekula are in the hospital. And when Mindy found out that I gave Rabbi Sekula a kidney, she like, couldn't get over it. Like that, you know, she made all these jokes, like a babish a kidney, a kidney, like a woman's kidney went into rabbi's body. Like, you know, she just found it so crazy. Anyway, it got into her head that she's gonna give a kidney. And mm -hmm. she's one of the, I think like an older kidney donor. She's like with 60, what, 60 something, 65? How old was she when she gave the kidney? Almost 70. Almost 70. She looked yeah. great. Like you would never know that. She was, I think, 67. 67 when she decided that she's going to give her kidney. Okay. So she gave her kidney to, I think it was like a secular person, right? Just like a very, very nice guy. So before you give the kidney, donor and um, the recipient meet. In Toronto, they make you meet. In other countries, you don't have to. But in Toronto, it's, it's a small community. They feel like you have to meet each other. So you don't regret later you know, who you gave your kidney to. So she meets the guy, okay? And they're talking, whatever. And she's so happy she's going to be helping this man and you know, saving his life. And then um, she, he looks over and he goes, oh, those are your Shabbat candles. Like her Shabbat candles are on the buffet. So she goes, yeah, those are my Shabbat candles. And you should know you know, now that I'm giving you my kidney, I want to pray for you. It's very special to pray at the candles. So he, he, sa she, he says, oh, that's so nice of you. So she goes, I need to know your mother's name. Okay. So he goes, oh, my mother's name is Mindel. Oh, no. Goes, really? That's my name. Mindy Klein is really Mindel. Not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence at all. There's thousands of Jewish names out there. She could have been, you know, Shprinza Hanna, you know, uh, whatever, Rivka Chasya. She could have been a thousand names. And his mother could have a thousand different names. No? It could be Esther and Leah and Rivka and Rachel. No. His mother's name is Mindel and her name is Mindel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here's what I'm trying to tell you. Like that is called Nivua. What does that mean? That she was to be his physical, he was reborn. Like you have to appreciate, like she gave him life, right? Again, so uh, there was a first Mindel who gave him life and now a second Mindel. Oh, and for all you know, it was the Mindel in Shemayim who was arranging the Mindel on earth you know what I mean? Like who was being that Melitz Yashar who was going to Hashem and, and crying, like help my son. You know, right? 
This is what we have to appreciate. So when you look at tefillah, you have to look at, it's a beautiful idea for us. I didn't like think of it, I have to be honest. Like, you know, I can give this class 10 times. I gave it 10 times already, not 10, but I gave it another time. And it doesn't always hit you. That's why we have to repeat and repeat and repeat because it's different today than it was a year ago or two years ago, right? Life has changed and so is your, your understanding, okay? So this is a beautiful idea, okay? And in this idea of Shema Koleinu, it's not only that we're asking like Hashem listen to the collective voice of the Jewish people, which is huge and I will explain it, but Shema Koleinu is listen to like my voice, our voices, each and every one of our voices. So you need to appreciate, like stop for a second, like really, when I'm telling you these stories of all of these people, do you understand the depth of the siyata dishmaya of these stories? Like how you got to line up, you know, this kid at seven years old in Dallas, Texas, and then you got to fast forward, what, who knows, 18, 20 years, and put him in Iraq. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, bongi, bongi. even like, we're all like, I was thinking about this, like I'm at the light and you're at the light, okay? So you're late for work and I'm too early for work. So I'm looking at the light and I'm praying what? I'm too early. Let it be read. I'm not in a hurry. Okay. <laughs> and the guy next door is praying what? He's late for work. What's he praying? Let it be green. <laughs> I gotta go. Okay, so it's like, you know, like, you know, these two people, like, whoa, like, just think about this. Like, what's Hashem supposed to do? <laughs> so, do you understand the depth of what's going on here? Like, you know, we can't even manage our own, like, where's my glasses? Imagine managing 7 billion people's <laughs> lives on 7,000 gazillion other directions. It's like, really, it's really something. It's really, really something. Okay. Okay. And this, we have to understand, this is what Hashem is, is uh, managing to do. Okay. So now let's look. Okay. So when you pray, now what Karen said is very important. Okay. Very important. When you pray, you need to believe that you're doing something, that something is really happening. And, and I think it's hard for us sometimes. Like sometimes like I think we pray and we're just like, okay, did my prayer thing, check. You know what I mean? But really you need to appreciate that you're getting many mitzvahs in prayer. There's many mitzvahs that happen when you pray if you believe that prayer is working, okay? Many mitzvahs that you get if you believe that prayer is working. So there's something called the six constant mitzvahs. Does anybody know what the six constant mitzvahs are? Yeah? Okay, so say a little bit. Like, I, I, I'm, I'd like some explanation, okay? <laughs> Not to kill. Okay, no, 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 no. That's one of the 10 commandments, okay? Let me explain to you. What does the mean six? What's the word constant mitzvahs even mean to you like that's really a, a heavy title right then and there so explain what the title means what does the title mean what's the word constant what does that mean happening all the time okay so let's get real uh, ladies and gentlemen how many mitzvahs are constant you can't constantly be washing your hands you're not constantly saying asher yatsar it's only when you go to the bathroom you're not constantly shaking a lulav and an esrog you, know, you, you look at mitzvahs are usually they're time bound, they're holiday bound. There's usually restrictions, but there are six mitzvahs that you can do all day long. That's what it means by constant. Okay, it's mitzvahs that are forever happening. They can be forever happening in your heart. It doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter, you know, if uh, what's it called, you, you know, are washing with a washing cup. It doesn't matter. There are six constant mitzvahs. You can do them all the time. Okay, I want to hear from people what some of them are. Okay. Uh, I would say helping other people. Like, okay, yes and no, yes. right? Because, you know, when it's really dark and late at night and you're in a, you know, in, a, somewhere in the Zahara desert, you can't help somebody. So let me explain yes. to you what they are. It's really important for us to know. Okay. So, uh -huh. number one is to know that there is a God. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Asher Hotse Sicha, Eretz Okay. 
all day long, you have to know that there is a God who redeemed us, who took us out of Egypt, all right? That this isn't guesswork, okay? Historical fact, there is a God. So when I believe in prayer, then I am doing one of the six constant mitzvahs besides praying, right? I'm believing in Hashem, okay? What else? Anyone know another one? Not believe in other gods. Say this again, okay. Not believing in any other gods. Beautiful, Karen. So what does that mean? That means when I'm praying and I'm not well, I'm not believing in the God of the doctor or the God of the money or the God of the vitamin or the God of homeopathy. I'm not believing in any of those gods. I know in the end, the only real God that can cure me is Hashem. The other people are just messengers. And if God, you know, uh, elects that those messengers will be successful, they will. But if God elects that they won't, they won't. So it's not like anything else. So when I'm praying to Hashem and I'm saying, look, you know, like this girl, like, you know, there's nobody else who can find my shidduch for me. And in the process of you finding my shidduch for me, Hashem, I have this mitzvah to pray for other people. And I really want to. I can't even do it sincerely without your help. I'm just human. And in human life, I, it's hard not to feel alone or jealous when someone else who's your good friend gets married before you. And now you're the only single girl left. Right? So I, that's another one. So what's another of these six constant mitzvahs? To love Hashem. So when you pray to Hashem, you learn to love him. Why? It's good. Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of your prayers is recognizing that good, right? So much of the prayers is, you know, um, you're Gomel Chassadin, you're the God of kindness, you're the God who provides us sustenance, you're the God who does this. It brings you to gratitude. Gratitude brings you to love. It really does, right? Okay, what's another one of the, the six constant mitzvahs? To be in awe of Hashem. Like to realize like, whoa, no one else has the power for any of these things. No one else but you. So do you see how many, getting so many mitzvahs all at the same time, right? Okay, so what were the other ones? Yichud Hashem. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, right? That everything is coming from one source. That one source is goodness, okay? So it's always for the good. When you davening, that's huge. So the same thing with the, you'll see when we go on with the Shema Kolinu, like the kind of, you know, recognition and how you're saying, like, please, you have out of mercy, God, out of mercy, out of mercy, right? It all has to come out of mercy because I'm not really that deserving, right? Like life in itself is your gift. Beyond that, you know, how are you going to be patient just for that one, right? And then it says, Lo sasoru acharei, um, levavachem and acharei eimechem. Like Hashem, in Davidi, you ask Hashem, like, you know, don't let me stray. I don't want to stray. That's what you're asking the whole time. Slach lanu, you know, forgive us, keep us on the right path. So there's so many beautiful things that are happening while you are Davidi. It's nice for us to really, you know, take a look at this, okay? So it's interesting here. Let me just say, okay. So this is also something I found very interesting. The rabbis say that prayer is a miracle. It's a nice idea. So they say that prayer is a miracle because prayers really affect things. So it's interesting. So let's say, for instance, we could take the story of Barak, right? This is a miracle. There's a lady sitting in New York, in uh, what's it called, in California. It's a lady sitting in California who has the name of a soldier who she doesn't know for two cents, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Never really heard of the guy before, right? Who is sitting in her kitchen while he is fighting in battle for his life and for the life of the Jewish people in Gaza with the most horrendous terrorist animals. Like, like let's be real what these people are. They're nothing but animals. They're not, they're not humans, most of them, right? They would chop your head off and shoot you and like what they would do to you is incredibly horrific. Okay, so this lady sitting in California gets up in the morning, you know, has her coffee, does her davening, pulls out a tehillim, that's going, <laughs> what are we doing? We finished this class, so what are we doing? Somebody gets on and says a prayer of thanks, right? 
and me and you and blah, blah, blah. How many of the names that even St Sandy, you list to us? So, you know, some of them are our friends and we know them. Some we don't know for two cents. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And we're sitting together. We finished, you know, 8.30, 9.30. It's like a bunch of cute little ladies <laughs> you know, pooped and tired. I you know, really would like to be going to bed. <laughs> or opening this thing like, mm -hmm. <laughs> some days more kavana, some days less kavana, some days we remember, some days we forget. And a miracle is happening. And you are affecting the treatment of all of these people. You may be taking away some of their pain. You may be adding on five minutes to their life. You may be praying. And then later, these prayers are saved in a box for their children. It's a nace. Okay. So how is it that this nace works? Because we say everything really works. And very important for us. Remember, we talked about it in the other class. I didn't give you enough of uh, stuff. We're gonna have to learn it more next week in Amuna. But everything works mita connected mita, right? Like the good, the bad, and the ugly. The way you act, if you act ugly, Hashem reflects back the ugliness. You act bad, reflects back the bad. You act good, reflects back the good. So it's a nace. The Torah tells you it is a nace that people will take their time. You will set aside time for complete strangers and daven for them. That's really very miraculous. Like, you know what I mean? I don't even know these people. And if I didn't believe in the power of prayer, I for certainly would not be doing this, right? So we really, we have to appreciate because you went out of your way and you went out of the way of the natural derech teva. Natural derech teva is, eh, you know, why bother? That would be the natural derech teva, right? Right, that's natural. You like are fighting, you're going, no. I, I want to go to bed at 9.30, I'm not. And if it takes me whatever amount of time, we are saying this prayer of thanks. Even if we don't see that tomorrow morning, all those people are out of hospital dancing around and feeling great. We don't care. We know it's making a difference because you are going out of your way to change your nature. So then Hashem says, ah, in merit of that, I will change nature. And that's how the nace works. Okay, so it's really something that we have to appreciate. So you, you need to know that you are very important. Like we don't understand that, but we are. And we are the ones who really turn the wheel. If we don't make those efforts, then Hashem doesn't reciprocate. So when you're going out of your way, right? And so therefore, nace has many, 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 many meanings. So nace means miracle. Nace means a banner, okay? Like a flag. So when you see these miracles happen, you see people who lived longer, you know, it, 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 we have to appreciate that. Like I remember, you know, with certain people, good friends of mine who had, you know, who were diagnosed with illnesses and they had a very bad prognosis, right? The prognosis was three months, six months, and they lived five years. It's a nace, right? It's a nace. And it's a flag that we should wave and we should be, you know, besimcha and, and point to it and realize it, okay? Nace also means to elevate, right? So when you're davening, you're elevating the entire circumstance, right? And what did we always say? You are sending a care package to heaven with that person. All of our prayers are their air miles to heaven because, because of them, it initiated us to pray. There's so many beautiful ideas and ways to look at this as a nace. Okay, so now let's go into the words in the Sidur, okay? So Shema Koleinu, Hashem Elokeinu. It's very interesting. So listen to our voice. We said the voice of the neshama and the voice of the heart and the voice of our kavana, right? And it's interesting, Hashem Elokeinu. Why those two names of God? What do those two names mean? Who's Hashem? God of? Justice. Mercy. Hashem. Oh, Hashem is mercy. Yes. Okay. Elohim is justice. And the other one is justice. And Hashem Yud K Vav K is like such a beautiful name. It's the God of the past, the present, and the future. Okay. So whenever you're saying that, like it's like you think and you say, Thank you, Hashem, for the past, and thank you, Hashem, for the present, and thank you, Hashem. I have a Muna in the future. Okay. These are like really that you'll be there for me. Okay, beautiful idea. So why would you say Hashem Elokeinu? Because in prayer, that's the names you see. 
you know, it's hard for us, right? Sometimes it's the yes, sometimes it's the not yet is the answer, and sometimes the answer is no. So you're getting answers. Do you know what I mean? Like it's right. That's how you're feeling, okay? So Shema Kaleinu Hashem Elokeinu Chus Berachem Oleinu. So what's Chus Berachem Oleinu? It's have pity and compassion on us. So when we're going to pray to Hashem. We're going knowing that we may not be deserving of all the wonderful things that we want. So we're not coming up to Hashem like, like, excuse me, <laughs> but hi, God, do you remember me? I'm the one who does this, 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 and this, and this. Do I deserve your attention? We're not going like that. <laughs> we're going, hi, God, we understand that you are incredible and great and powerful and wonderful. And I'm just a little work in progress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so please, all right, can you help me? All right. So we're not going with arrogance or chutzpah. We're really going with an understanding of who we are compared to God. <laughs> all right. And we're just very grateful. Like we're actually very grateful that Hashem even listens. He could have created a world that said, uh, you know, don't talk to me. <laughs> all right. Your job is just to do what I said. Don't talk to me. You know, like, so it's really, you know, a very beautiful idea. Okay. And what do we want? Hashem, we want you to take, like, to kabel, to accept, okay? Because sometimes our prayers aren't that great. You know, anybody here ever find themselves prayer, praying with probably no kavana? Like, just going, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? Anybody ever do that? Like, anybody, you know, like, whoa, where am I in my sitter, right? So, like, we get it. We get it. So we're saying, like, please, Hashem, like, even if we didn't put the spice into the word, like, the power into the word, please, like, just out of pure pity on us, just, you know, out of the fact that we're really trying and we're all ADD, okay, could you please, except for Sandy, could you please answer my prayers, right? Just, right, because we're, we're, I love this, because you're coming here, what you're coming here with in front of Hashem is incredible, humility okay so what's the thought i am aware that every moment you are sustaining my life yes or no yeah yes okay now some people when you tell them that they say it's very scary like i don't like living with this thought like every minute god's sustaining my life and what does that mean like i could drop any second like ah. okay so how would you tell someone that it's not scary <laughs> It's like a companion who's there all the time for the good and the bad, just there. Right. Okay. They're there all the time and they're sustaining your life. And if they took away your life, then the trip was over and that was it. The Shem really loves you. You don't know how long it will be. Shem's saying, I can't tell you how long it will be, honey, because if I do, you'll procrastinate till the last second. <laughs> Anybody here think they would do that? Okay, so you would procrastinate to the last second. Right? So says, you know, I'll be here with you the whole time. Don't worry about it. Whatever it is, it's all good in the end, right? Okay, so that's how you could live with that. But it's very beautiful to live with that reality because then you know who's really in charge and who's the boss. Remember what we said, okay? We said at the end of days, there was going to be a lot of anxiety and confusion and this and that. And then we laughed because we said, if we looked at history, there was more, more reason to be anxious and confused in the past history of the Jewish people than there is right now, right? So the level of anxiety that we have is like beyond the roof and it doesn't compare to the, rep, the, the level of trauma and trouble that once upon a time there was, right? So what do we say? The only people who will be able to manage through all this anxiety that just comes from the fact that we're just not as capable we're much more spoiled. We're much more this. We're so much more used to having it good. You know, if you break your nail, you're hysterical. If your cleaning lady doesn't show up, it's the end of the world. You know what I mean? If you, what's it called? Somebody else is wearing the same dress you are at a wedding. You might as well like, okay, right? All these things, right? So who will be able to live through all this anxiety? Those who call out to Hashem and believe that there is a God, right? Like that's like kind of, you know, Sandy always says that to me, you know, history, the, the news, everything looks crazy. But the only thing is I know God's in charge. <laughs> okay. So, you know, once we know he's in charge, put it on the shelf and let him take care of it. Okay, right? 
right? We could definitely play a role in it, but he, so that's a nice idea. So this is what you want to know. You are dependent on Hashem, right? For your survival and your sustenance. So here's, why am I telling you these feelings? Because this is how you want your voice to express itself, okay? So your voice is expressing itself with, you are in charge of me every moment. You are my survival. You are my sustenance. And the other one is, I am so grateful. What am I so grateful about? For my life. my life, I can see everything. Okay, I'm so grateful for my life. What else? Is that what I was going to say? So I'm going to say like this. I am so grateful for the life you gave me and that it came from you and that you are my boss. I would not want to be under anybody else. Mm -hmm. it's a real reality here okay i don't want to depend on uh, biden or trump or any other garbage out there <laughs> okay i don't want to depend on facebook or WhatsApp. i don't want to depend on even the greatest rabbi i want to depend only on Hashem. and that's a gift that we got like it's a big gift we 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 have to appreciate that gift we really do we really we're blessed we're so blessed Imagine if you didn't have it, pull Hashem out of your picture. I mean, where would you be, right? It's so funny. Like I laugh my head off. Like when you think about like all of these, you know, like the 12 step program, right? You know, all it ever talks about is like a higher power because they really recognize that the human being really is not strong enough to not fall, to be an animal and to just be like taken over by his body. They understand it. You need the help of a higher power. That's the MS. So we're so lucky because our higher power is called Hashem. And we believe he is one, only one Hashem, all powerful one Hashem. So yes, you know, we can do a lot of what's platitudes. We can go, yes, the higher power, my good feeling, the tooth fairy, the, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's like tons of them out there, but we are so lucky, right? We are so grateful because it's not the tooth fairy for us. It's Hashem, right? And that's a huge, huge, beautiful, okay? Okay, be beautiful. Okay, we're gonna come, we're coming to this last little bit and then we'll do more next week, but this is beautiful. So it says here, Ki Kale Shomea, because you are Kale, the Almighty. Almighty is that name. You are the Almighty Hashem, okay? You are Shomea, you listen to Tefilos, Tefilos, which is what we would usually use as the word prayers. And then there's another word here, the, tach, the tachanunim, the tachanunim. What are tachanunim? It says supplications. So what are the tachanunim? That's a little bit of what Esther said before. Those are the cries of the heart. That's our emotions. You know, some of our prayer, like, let me be honest. When you say Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echot, you need to have a very thoughtful thinking head. Okay. You are doing the mitzvah of saying Shema, and you are taking upon yourself, O Malchut Shemayim. You are saying, I am pledging allegiance to God. That is very much in the brain. You have to know what you're saying. You have to know what you're thinking, right? Tachtunim means I'm just crying from my heart. The two greatest leaders of the Jewish people in prayer were the people who cried from the heart. Do you know who they are? David HaMelech. And Chana. When you look at Tehillim, it's not an intellectual prayer. It's totally from the heart. It's coming from all the challenge and all the emotion and all the hurt and all the pain. That's where it's coming from. That's David HaMelech's like, help, <laughs> you know, help. And I love you. And in the end of it all, I know you're the only one who's going to save me. And all I really want is you. Please, Hashem, just help me and help me and help me. And the same with Hana. It was I, like, I was, I'm a woman. I was born to have a womb. I was born to have children. Please, Hashem, don't leave me without. These were very heartfelt prayers. So it's very, very beautiful. So here you're saying, Hashem, listen to the voice. Listen to the voice of reason that I have. Where I understand, you are the one who's always in charge of, you know, Parnassa. Thank you so much. You're the one who gives to everybody. And then the thing of my heart, I'm not getting Hashem. I'm all by myself. I need money. I need help. Do you see the difference? So 
we're asking Hashem to listen to both. Okay, Jody, you came just in time for the prayer part, right? Okay, so we learned such nice things, Baruch Hashem, about prayer. So everybody has to get their thank you prayer, right? Okay, so let me just, um, I just want to stop the recording for a second, okay? Just give me that minute.